this time on KEI Fabrication. Well folks, we're trying to get this uh, toy hauler conversion moved further along and we've had torrential rain last night and today and we're just trying to make the best of it and get further progress done. Alright folks, so let me explain. Getting ready to go on another little reconnaissance mission. Nice. Hey folks, my name is Mike. This is KEI Fabrication and welcome to my shop. We've got a bunch more new projects in the queue. We're looking forward to meeting more of you. And for those of you who've been with the channel for a while, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your comments and the interaction and encouragement. I hopefully through this project we've gained some credibility with you folks and let's see what's coming up next. Alright folks, we went in a little deeper than anticipated just like every other project you get started on. There's always more to it than you realize. So what I decided to do, um, the previous owner used three quarter inch OSB and the factory floor was a half inch so there was always a problem with the linoleum or vinyl that they put down started to rip and tear because it was a dissimilar height so uh, what I did was I took that as an opportunity to get rid of the half inch up to here and I've got a threshold to transition from the the factory type flooring to whatever the flooring is we're going to use down there so the actual raise in floor height will happen here. This will all be consumed by a small storage area, so you won't see that. And the area over there is going to be completely encapsulated in a storage cabinet. Uh, that's the height of the bed uh, from the back of the trailer all the way forward. So up here, the half inch is going to end right where the cabinet begins and then the three-quarter flooring will come flush with the beginning of the cabinet so when you put the flooring down you won't even know it so that was a good solution the other thing it's allowing me to do is put more cross members where the tires are going to sit and just support the flooring as good as it can be. The cool thing that I found is right under here which is where the front tire of the motorcycle and the front tire of the four front tires of the four-wheeler will go uh, there's a metal cross member already that this cross member here the wooden cross member is actually gonna be uh, carriage bolted through. There was three carriage bolts in there I took them out and uh, I can access them from underneath so so that's cool. Um, I've got all of the parts. Um, I'm going to look through the window here. All the parts over there on the workbench under the deck are all sealed with penetrating epoxy. So everything that's going in here is going to be basically water sealed, uh, waterproofed, water resistant. So um, I'm going to let this dry. I just coated everything here that is going to be covered up with penetrating epoxy and I'll let it flash. So tomorrow when I come back I can put start putting all of the cross members in, uh, stiffening up the sides where the rot got into it a little bit uh, and then putting my cross members where the tires are going to rest and uh, I've got all the pieces to this cabinet built got my drawer brackets hooked to the wall the only thing I don't have made is the cap because I'm trying to decide what I want to do with the cover to cover this up so we'll see I don't want to get into formica or anything like that I just want a solid piece of wood and uh, give it a coat of polyurethane or something and call it even so we'll worry about that at another time alright so I'm going to uh, run to the lumber store get a sheet of uh, 3 quarter OSB instead of this wool bat I'm going to get the 2 inch thick um, pink solid or rigid foam 
so it's not a sponge and that'll take care of my insulation in the floor all right that's enough jabbering I'm gonna close things up and uh, run to the store all right folks I'm going the other direction now I'm starting to put this thing back together I've got all of my exterior bracing in to re-strengthen the lower portion of the wall um, I've got the cross members in and I've removed the wool bat and I'm starting to put the two inch um, rigid foam insulation in I've got my blocking in for the flooring so what I did was I split the flooring so I could wedge the floor into that side and I'm gonna do the same wedging the floor into this side I got one more piece of blocking to put in there and put my uh, foam insulation in and then I'll have uh, stringers or blocking going down the center where the tires of the motorcycle are going to sit so I've got to uh, cut those to length put them uh, coat them with epoxy and then I'll come back and screw them in uh, and that will provide me the spacing for my foam insulation so all of these pieces are cut they've been test fit and they have been coated with uh, penetrating epoxy so I'm gonna go get that piece right now slide that one into place I got some PL adhesive to bond it to the floor and I've got some um, all-weather screws to fasten the floor to the cross members all right here we go so I got home from work today I put the blocking in where the tire of the motorcycle is going to sit I got the corner put in place slipped under the wall and that's all epoxied and uh, PL adhesive and I got all the insulation cut and put in place so I coated the top side of all these with penetrating epoxy so I'm just gonna let that dry the other thing I gotta figure out is before I put this down I've got some flush mount D-rings that are gonna go uh, somehow be incorporated into this there's a metal cross member directly under this horizontal piece and I'm gonna try to somehow make the D-rings fasten to that so uh, I'm not gonna put the floor down and screw it down until I figure that out I may put some metal brackets that reach down and grab onto that just to get a positive connection to the frame with the D-rings just so I'm not relying on wood with bolts or screws going through it to hold the four-wheeler or the motorcycle in the area so uh, once this is all dry and cured I can stick the floor down just temporarily until I figure out the d-ring thing and then I'm going to start reconstructing this whole cabinetry across here so that's uh, let's see today's Monday yeah so maybe tomorrow night I can work on that all right folks we made a little progress tonight I got the floor just set in place I think I said something about the D-rings uh, I've got to make provisions that actually bolt to the metal part of the frame so that'll lift out and allow me to do that uh, what I decided to go for tonight just because I was a little short on time was the drawers so they're all in place I picked up a piece of sanded plywood routed the corner radius this corner and this is going to get varnished so um, so that's kind of the the deal there we got a little cubby to throw like I said flip-flops or whatever in there got the three drawers that used to be located under this and that was shortened because the drawers themselves were only 16 inches deep and this is 17 and a half to here so it fit perfectly in there so we got the functionality remained there and uh, what I did was I just put some uh, cleats in here that eventually I'll 
when this is in position, I'll put some screws in there to hold it uh, securely. So this will be a nice shelf. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get a 110 outlet over here on this side. This would be perfect for a fan or for watching movies. I uh, put the laptop up there or whatever and um, we don't have to worry about the battery being charged. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I can go through this closet. Somehow there's some 110 over in this area that I might be able to snake some wires across and put a 110 box in here that will be concealed. I can conceal it inside the closet, run some conduit covering across to the other side, or uh, maybe go up high with it and down just so it's out of the way. But anyway, we'll work about worry about that later. Alright, so gotta play around with the D-ring so I can get this floor permanently installed and I know I've been talking about it for a couple of days but I've got to start putting that side of the camper back together put the water heater back in um, water pump I may do some um, mounting mount the pump differently because I took some space away from there I want to reconfigure it and put it in a position where it's easy to maintain We'll worry about that once the cabinet is roughed in. I've got my line drawn in the wood here. Uh, it's right there for how far the storage compartment is coming out. And then the hinge for the bed will work off of this. That'll get some vertical supports down to the floor now that the floor is back in there. Okay. So this is all just to get to the point where I can actually cut the back of the camper open and put the door on. So um, still contemplating some ways to get rid of this. I don't know what you really call it, but it's uh, let's see. I don't know. It's a nailer or a header actually that held the bunk like this one is. And there's another one holding that bunk in place. Uh, again, I think I told you that when they assembled the camper, they put the screws from the outside in and um, then put the vinyl siding on the camper, so or aluminum siding, whatever it is. So I got to figure out a way to get that undone, and I think I may put this carpeted bumper up there because uh, it's probably going to make a mess of those. And I can go through the carpet with some screws and pick up the studs that are behind the paneling here. So uh, that should solve that issue over there. Um, I don't really know what else to do. So we'll, we'll see if I come up with an idea between now and then. Alright, I'm going to go eat some supper. Alright folks, we're in the going back together mode. I've got the headboard for the bed uh, done. I've got the furnace outlet done. I've got the water pump remounted and uh, in position. That's all wired up and functional. The hot water heater bay is ready for the hot water heater. It's got three coats of penetrating epoxy on the floor now. The cabinet is framed in. I'm going to have this access door for the valving to isolate the hot water heater and the water pump during winterization. This is going to get a removable lid and this is going to be kind of a secret storage. I carpeted the inside of it. Uh, so I wanted to get this far along because now it's time for this step. I just cut a conservative cutout for the door. Um, the door is going to be 55 by 75 and you can see it's going to be uh, real close to the top of the ceiling, uh, maybe three inches away when it's done. I cut uh, an inch inboard of the 55 by 75 line. The other thing I've done is I've got the D-rings in place. I've secured um, part of the, the D-ring assembly to the factory frame. I've got four locations uh, in position. Uh, 
everything is uh, is recessed into the floor and it's got penetrating epoxy to prevent water damage so I've just got to crawl underneath the camper and start bolting these down and then I've got these reinforcement uh, backing plates that are also going to get incorporated into the, the design so I'm finally at the point where I need to uh, cut this opening so I'm going to start cutting from the inside and leaving the skin because I'm not going to open it up to the weather until I get all of my metal measurements and uh, I really want to knock the hole in this camper and then go ahead and put it back together uh, you know maybe within a day um, so I want to do all the prep work ahead of time and then worry about the uh, the fabrication part to minimize any surprises so um, I think that's it for an update for now um, we're getting there um, I've actually got the panels that are going to drop in to the storage area and the access for the mechanicals and the front panel the measurements are all done the actual bed that's going to extend out from there um, for when the four-wheeler or the motorcycle is moved out of the trailer it'll fold up the hinge line is going to be right there and it'll fold up and uh, be part of uh, that wall uh, maybe with a ratchet strap to hold it in place so moving along um, kind of took care of some issues along the way I'm sure I found more issues with the the very bottom of the camper had some water damage and Basically, uh, we knew that when we bought it, as I've said many, many times. Now I'm just seeing what the extent of it is. And there's a metal cross member that's going to replace the wooden one that's under here that the hinge of the door bolts on. So none of that is really an issue and would have had to been removed anyway to strengthen the back of the camper. So um, I'm going to start tearing into this, get rid of all this. <coughs> and... Uh, kind of do the prep work so when I cut the aluminum part out uh, I can tack the metal in place and get it all framed in and do some fit checks of the door uh, check the operation of it and then burn it all in so alright next time uh, you see this video uh, either some of this will be further along or close to completed or there will be another big hole in the back of the camper so alright here we go well, there you have it, folks. One giant hole in the back of the camper. Um, in the process of getting to the water damage in the corners, which I knew it had. So the very last piece that goes across is rotted. You can see the remains of it here. And then, fortunately, that's where the vertical studs attach to. You can see that it compromised it and this corner was leaking from the top all the way down so the make sure if you're sealing your camper new or old make sure these corners are tight because the water finds it weighs its way in and it runs down and it just destroys it from the uh, the time the water enters it uh, and then it never dries out it keeps getting wet and wet and then it compromises the other structure so uh, that's not a big deal. I, I can handle that. Uh, I knew that was a problem. So I'm in the process of taking off the aluminum siding. And I'm working my way up. Here's one of the problems with this here. This is the waterproof barrier that they put in the camper. Well, what they do is they put it on the belly of the camper. And then they wrap it around and they staple it to the studs. Well, it's not only waterproof from getting water from the, the road up into the bottom. But if water leaks and makes its way in here, it acts as a swimming pool and it's what uh, starts the rotting of this entire thing. You can see where uh, this was kind of rebuilt from the back wall all the way forward from the water damage. So this is a brand new 2x3 sitting on top of the frame here and then the OSB is sitting on top of that. So we'll give all this uh, a coat. You can see that this has been coated with penetrating epoxy from the top side when it was put down and um, we'll continue to treat that uh, now that it's exposed and we can get to the back of this and get it all put back together so 
Uh, I think the next thing I'm going to do once I get this opened up a little more and figure out just how bad the corners are, uh, I'm going to bring the door over and test fit it here just to see where my steel cross member is going to go for the hinge plate where the hinges are going to be fastened to. So, um, Right now I'm just trying to expose this. This is kind of the, the crummy work getting this far along. And I'm going to replace these vertical studs all the way to the top and including this one. And then the metal will start. So there'll be a nice metal framework with vertical studs, the horizontal that's the hinge plate. And then there'll be a header above the door that is all metal as well. And that will stop the parallelogram of effect when you go down the road. If it's tied in properly and gusseted. Uh, the back of the camper is not going to shake around and and basically break itself to pieces. So, all right, I got my work cut out for me. Here we go. All right, folks, it may not look like I've done much here, but I've reconstructed the corners and I put a doubler on the inside that's also varnished and it's got routered edges for trim. I reconstructed the last eight inches of the roof and the ceiling panel. Everything's got um, penetrating epoxy uh, and I went to the steel supplier yesterday and I got my material for the door frame. I'm using one and a half by three by one eighth wall for the horizontal and the two verticals. The horizontal is the hinge plate and then the header the top of the door is one and a half by one and a half. I'm going to use the door as a fixture to create the frame and the opening. And I'm going to tack it all together so it stays nice and square and true. And then I'm going to bring it down. It's going to rest directly on top of this I-beam. I thought originally it was going to go down below, but uh, the way the camper is constructed, the 2x3s are sitting directly on it. So... Um, and I had to use one and a half inch thick material because that is the construction method uh, as far as conventional lumber is uh, concerned. So uh, I've got my sketch here of uh, where I'm going to add gusseting and I'm going to try and incorporate some diagonal gussets that will be in the top corners. I've incorporated those into the panels. I'll show you those in a minute and some plates to grab a hold of the final 2x3 framing that's going to be off the back of this. And I need wood here because that is where all of the siding and everything attaches to. So I've uh, got a hole for the wire chase. I've got holes for attaching the bumper to the wood structure. So we'll actually gain some integrity of the floor uh, as a result of that. And I'm going to through screw it to the actual wood header that sits directly on top of this. And I'm not going to put the header in or the final framing lumber until I get this uh, steel structure in place. And then this upper header will determine the length of my framing material. So these are the panels that's um, going to be sandwiched between the remainder of the construction timbers and door frame and what that does is it sandwiches in and then it's got um, paneling on the inside that matches the interior of the camper. So um, this is where the diagonal gusset's going to go. I'm kind of upside down right now, so I left that in there. If I need to trim that back, I can. I just, carrying this around and moving it around, I didn't want it to fracture out of here, so I left it there not only for when, before this is attached, but also uh, if I do put that cornered gusset in the top side of the framing, um, it'll be covered up by cosmetic pieces. So, all right. I got to get up to the shop. Uh, one of the issues I've run into is it's been over 100 degrees for two days straight. I've worked through the heat until yesterday afternoon 
and my penetrating epoxy that I've been using uh, was kicking in the bucket. It was actually burning my hands because the temperature was so high. The exothermic reaction was happening uh, much sooner. Um, so I had to just, just give it a break. Um, so while it's cooler out this morning, although the humidity is really coming in, it's supposed to be another 100 degree day, I need to get up to the shop and start framing in that door. So that's what I'm going to do next. All right, until next time, remember, if you're going to be stupid, be smart about it. Next time on KEI Fabrication. What do you think? I think we're ready. Oh. So this is where someone said put the car in.